Project 130 is tripwire alarm. The slide switch is on, but you don't hear anything. Now, please turn down your volume because when I remove one end of the black jumper wire, an alarm will sound. It's like a burglar alarm that goes off when a wire is broken. A lot of real life burglar alarms have like wires or sensors along the windows and doors that if they are broken or disturbed will trigger an alarm. And this is essentially the same principle. You could run a longer wire between these two points and have it go across a doorway so that if someone removes or breaks the wire, an alarm will sound. And if you want, you can change the sound of the alarm by making alternative connections. You have a European siren, machine gun sound, or a fire engine siren. To reset the alarm, just reconnect the black jumper wire. Project 131 is current limiters. We're going to start with the slide switch off and the switcher in the middle position. The bicolor LED is on yellow and it's not very bright even when I move the adjustable resistor back and forth. But now I'm going to turn on the slide switch and the bicolor LED gets a little bit brighter. When the slide switch was off, the current was flowing through a 10,000 ohm resistor in the pivot stand. But when I turned on the slide switch, I opened up a 47 ohm resistor, which is far less powerful than the 10,000 ohm one. So the LED can get brighter and it also the RV2 has a much greater range. Lastly, when I move the switcher to the left, the LED gets even brighter because now the RV2 resistor, which can be as high as 10,000 ohms, is bypassed. Turning off the slide switch, allows the 10,000 ohm pivot stand resistor to be back in the circuit, so the LED will go dim again, but turning it on bypasses it. Project 132 has the same current limiters, except they are now in parallel instead of series as in the previous project. With the slide switch off and the switcher in the middle position, the LED is very dim because in this circuit, the RV2 acts as a fixed 10,000 ohm resistor. You can't adjust it because of how it's connected. And that greatly restricts the current flowing through. But when I turn on the slide switch, the bicolor LED gets a little bit brighter since they're in parallel, the current has more than one path to flow through. Yet when I move the switcher to the C position, the bicolor LED reaches full brightness because now there is just a 47 ohm resistor for the electricity to flow through. That's all there is limiting the current. Electricity will always take the easiest path through a circuit where there's less resistance. But if I were to like close these paths, the LED becomes dimmer. Again, this is the only path that the electricity can flow through now. Project 133 is current director. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and when the adjustable resistor is on the left setting or the bottom setting when looked at from this side, the bicolor LED is on red and it is very bright. The color LED is on and flashing, but it's much dimmer. 
Now I'm going to gradually move the lever on the RV2 to the right, and now the, bi -co the color LED is brighter than the bicolor one. In addition, its current is controlling that through the bicolor LED so that both are now flashing. The color LED is now getting the most current. Slowly move the lever back to the left, and the bicolor LED gets the most current. The RV2 has a total of 10,000 ohms between the center and the two sides, and moving the lever will distribute the resistance to either side. Project 134 is similar to 133, except now the switcher is included, and while the color LED will only work when the switcher is on the far position, far position from me, when I move the switcher toward me, the bicolor LED turns red. It's reversible. Since current can flow through the bicolor LED in either direction, there's two LEDs, one that lights when the current flows in that direction, but the color LED allows current to flow through in a single direction. Project 135 is lazy fan. I'm going to leave the RV2 lever on the further setting for me and turn on the slide switch. The fan starts up, briefly lights, and then stops and goes out. I'm going to then turn off the slide switch, wait a little while, and turn it back on. Again, the fan spins and lights only briefly before stopping. You can repeat this several times. It's as if the fan is lazy and just wants to come on for a very brief period and then stop working altogether. Turning on the slide switch turns on the fan and charges up the C4 capacitor. Turning off the slide switch will cause the capacitor to discharge, which takes about 20 seconds. I replaced the light motor with the geared motor and merry-go-round, and I'm going to turn on the slide switch. The RV2 stays on the same setting. When I turn on the slide switch, the motor briefly and merry-go-round briefly spin and then stop. Same principle, just using the merry-go-round and geared motor this time. I replaced the geared motor with the two LEDs, and when I turn on the slide switch, the LEDs come on quickly and then go out. Once again, it's like they're lazy. They just want to come on quickly and then go out. That's it. Now, this time you can try it with different settings on the RV2. I'm going to set it to the middle setting. And let's see how long they stay on now. They stay on maybe a little bit longer. Or actually, no, they go out when the RV lever is closest to me. They will stay on the shortest. You saw them glow briefly when I moved the lever back. Project 138 is very lazy lights. I replaced the C4 capacitor with the C7 one, and now the LEDs just blink, and that's it. They don't light up. On the setting closest to me, the LEDs don't come on at all because the C7 capacitor stores less energy than the C4 one. Project 139 is very interesting. It is called electricity you can walk away with. You can see that the batteries 
the capacitor and the LED are not connected. And I'm not going to add any connections between these components other than what's already there. I'm going to take the capacitor and I am going to place it across points A and B. Now I'm going to pick up C4 and place it right here. Look at that. The bicolor LED lights up even though none of these components were ever connected together. Capacitors hold their charge very well, just like batteries. So I can like, let's say, take it wherever I want to, even if I took it like a thousand miles away from here and then I came back, assuming it was, I charged it before I left. When I place it over the LED, it's going to work. It will still power it. Now, if I did the C7 capacitor, the LED does not stay on as long. Now, a sequel to this project is located is Project 140, which will be in the next video I make.